Yeah. I can smell all of the smoke All that love and positivity, that shit is a joke I should dead them all, my heart ski down slopes When you the piggy bank, everybody wanna see you broke, bro Me and snakes don't lip lock I don't think the feet look good on me like flip flops I know if I spit it, it belongs in a ziplock They know I'ma kill them all they hear in this TikTok Your time is up Where there's fire, you see the smoke, yeah I know liars, I seen them fall, yeah. So, starting off, I am here with uh, Elkhorn South seniors, senior defensive line slash offensive lineman. I got Maverick Noonan, and I got Noah Bushard. Um, you know, just kind of start off uh, to get us started here. Um, you know, you guys have had a great season up, up until now. Um, you know, do you guys want to check in, you know, where you guys are at? Uh, mentally, physically, um, how you guys are feeling up until now? You got me out. Okay. Uh, I'll start with that physically. I think physically, we're like at our peak performance right now. We've just been we've been getting better, better and better throughout the whole year with practices going, and like our intensity is really starting to pick up with these um, with these upcoming games, and you know with everything that's going that's going on with us. This is our homecoming week, and Ooh. most teams, I was like, you're gonna get distracted with all that, but. Yeah. This like our best week of practice we've had in a long time. Nice. I'm gonna touch on that. I mean, I mean, we're just looking forward to uh, to Northwest tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, we can we can win big on them tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, I mean, physically we're doing great. Not too many injuries right now, so just looking forward to the rest of the season. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So you guys, like I said, you guys have had a good season. You know, you guys have some good wins over. <clears throat> you guys beat. Millard South, uh, you guys had them, you know, beat pretty good. They kind of made a little comeback there at the end. Uh, and you guys beating uh, undefeated Papio South. Um, how, what is that? What is, you know, what are the vibes like? What's the locker room feel like after those big wins? And how do you make sure that, you know, you guys don't, you know, let it get to your head and be like, oh, yeah, you know, we're top dogs. And then, you know, try to avoid that uh, that slump, I guess, after after a big game like that. Yeah. Well, we, I mean, we definitely celebrate after these games. Um, it, always, it always gets crazy in the locker room. Um, I, I've seen some of those videos. I've seen some of those videos. Yeah. Yeah. They get posted around. Um, especially like sometimes it just depends like what locker room we're in. Like if, we, if we're playing a Seacrest, we always like, we always go crazy after we win a Seacrest. Um, but like trying to prepare to lock in always um, ends up with our morning session the day after. So we have a we have a Saturday or Friday if we have a Thursday game film session and weightlifting and you always really need a like even if you won the game you had good you always can see the mistakes you made in the game and get better at them and that really helps us lock in and prepare us for the next week. All right, we're always looking at film uh, and you know we got playoffs around the corner so we're also trying to get better for that. Getting in the film room helps with that. So I mean, there's no off weeks. Yeah. So then, um, I guess real quick. You said you celebrate a little bit harder at Seacrest. What is it about Seacrest that, you know, brings that out? Is it just who you're playing against at that, like, usually there? Or? Um, well, this year we've only played Lincoln Southeast at Seacrest. And I actually, like, it was it was a good game. There was It was hot and early, so a lot of, like – I was there, yeah. But I, I really like playing them. I, like, have nothing bad to say about anyone on that team. They were all – they were great players. They are all really nice, actually. Mm -hmm. um, they had a great um, intensity. They were really physical, but it, I think it started our sophomore year, which was our second year in Class A, and we that was our first time playing at Seacrest that year. Mm -hmm. And it was when Lincoln Southeast had a really good team, and it was this was the year that we ended up going to state and we beat them in the semifinals. Yep. When a lot of people thought that we weren't going to, and at one point in the game, I really was questioning like if we were going to or not. Yeah, but we pulled out with a dub, and then that those years seniors they really just. They kind of went crazy in the locker room. And then last year, <laughs> when we played at Seacrest, it was another game like that. It was really hyped up with Lincoln Southeast with how good their team could be. And then we came out with a steady win with, like, some some bad conditions with running back at the time. Like, we had, I think, three running back injuries. Um, and so, like, all that just led the seniors that year again. To just, you know, they're just kind of showing out in the locker room afterwards at Seacrest. So, it's kind of like a yeah. – I guess it's a – Tradition now, huh? <laughs> Yeah, basically. 
All right. So then, yeah, you can, you you know, you mentioned uh, that that year when you guys made it to the state championship, you guys were young sophomores. Sophomores, yeah. Sophomores. So you know, you guys had a you guys had a great team that year. Um, how what from that team have you carried on? terms of like you know obviously you talked about like celebrating at Seacrest but in terms of like on the field at practice like that culture you know builders culture builders I guess um what kind of things like that from that team have you guys brought on till now now that you guys are seniors you guys are like leaders on the team um you know and making sure that you know that continues on not just this year but uh you know in the years to come you know to keep that culture at South. I mean, like I said earlier, we're just trying to have a great practice every week. Uh, I mean, our our Monday through uh, Thursday practice helps us win the game on Friday, and that's what we try to do every week. Uh, I mean, that team did a great job with it, too, and so we're just trying to lead them this year. Yeah, we really I, – I especially remember our sophomore year, how intense those practices were. And with, um, with both of us playing D-line and, like, scout team D-line, guys – going up against guys like Teddy Prohaska and, like, Isaac Zadiska, that really, like – showed us how intense it really is on the varsity level and we try i feel like we try and display that to the other young guys that practice now now that we are seniors just to show them like this is the level of intensity this is the pace that's got to be for us to win games get better practice and hopefully win state you guys you know you guys just talked about you guys win against you know guys like teddy guys like isaac um but you know you know, even yourself, Maverick, you, you know, your future teammate at Nebraska, Gunner, um, you know, great offensive tackle, one of the best off offensive tackles in the state. Uh, do you guys kind of have, like, maybe, it doesn't have to be in order, but maybe, like, a top three to five linemen that you guys have played on the off, like, that have given you guys that, I guess, how should I say, offensive linemen that you guys have played that, you know, that week leading up to that game, you're like, all right, I got I to gotta strap up for this guy for sure. Yeah. Um, my, my best two that come to mind are, uh, Gunner and then, uh, Sam Sledge. Yeah. We played him down at Nebraska. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, uh, that's the two that come to my mind. He was, uh, essential last year. Oh, and then Deshaun Woods. Yeah, Deshaun Woods was, 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 he was, he was a, probably the top three. By it was ball, a top yeah. three, yes. Strong dudes, strong dudes. And then, yeah, you guys played yeah. against Teddy and Isaac at practice every day. So, you know. Yeah, that was, really, yeah. Nice. Touch on recruiting for a little bit. Um, you know, so we'll start with you, Maverick. So you are currently committed to uh, Nebraska. Um, yeah. I know I already talked to you about this one time, but maybe for the people that haven't, like, you know, seen previous interviews or anything like that, uh, can you kind of talk to us about what, you know, led you to that decision to go to the Huskers? Um, I mean, a majority of things. I mean, on my visits, uh, I took two official visits. And I just felt like you know, it was, it was close to home. Um, I felt like their facility, their facility that they're building is going to be nice in the country. That was great. Um, I mean, I, I just love the school, too. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to go too far away. I've got a, a lot of family here, so I didn't want to – I don't want to go out of state or anything. So, I just felt like it was the best place for me. Nice. And then, uh, where all did you – where all did you have uh, offers and where did you visit? Uh – I had about a dozen offers, and I went to uh, Nebraska and, and Stanford were probably my two finalists. Nice. Did uh, did um, you know, that relationship with Gunner did that also kind of play a little bit into you know get like or not just Gunner, but like you know all the other guys in in the recruiting class because you guys have built a pretty solid recruiting class up until now. Um, you know how, how much have, have those guys uh been and you know important to getting you to. You know, commit to Nebraska? I mean, it helped quite a bit. I mean, I just, I've known him since, since sophomore year, since we both committed. And uh, I mean, I went to camps with them sophomore mm -hmm. year. I've just known him for a while and it, it just helps to have one guy that's committed there that I know, so. Yeah, definitely. All right. Uh, so then, you know, kind of shifting over to Noah, uh, you yourself are still, you know, uncommitted. You're still, you know, in, you know, looking for, you know, find your future home. What are what are you? Or I guess where have you? Where were you this summer? Like in terms of camps, uh, visits, and you know where do you plan on going? You know, like in terms of game day visits, all that kind of stuff. Mm, yeah. So, I 
I went to a couple different camps in the area. I went to the Nebraska camp, the Friday Night Lights camp, and I also went to the Northwestern camp in Chicago. Um, those were the two big ones in the area. And then I went to the East Coast and um, I went to camps at Harvard, Penn, and Dartmouth. Um, and that, that kind of rounded it out for me. Wish I could have hit more, but you know, you kind of get camped out toward a certain point and had to focus on the regular season at um, some point in the summer. And for game day visits, uh, I'm not looking at a whole lot right now. I wish I could make it out back to the East Coast again, but yeah. I mean, that's a long way. That's, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we'll just, we'll just play it by ear. Yeah. So then, you know, what have you, what have you done in the off season? Cause you know, for me personally, when I was looking at you last year and looking at you this year, um, I thought like you always had a lot of, you have a lot of potential just towards the end of that. I guess last year you guys had deep rotation. So you kind of were limited in, you know, your snaps and all that kind of stuff. But now, you know, you're in there, you know, almost the full time, um, where have you seen the biggest growth and the biggest improvements in your game? I think um, a lot of a lot of the weight room work has really paid off, and not necessarily like strictly strength training because I've always been pretty strong for how for how um, for my size. I think a lot of the secondary stuff like stretching and mobility work and um, doing more fast twitch stuff mm. and really getting explosive off the line. I feel like that's really helped put me in a position where. I can play pretty much anywhere in the box. If I just need, to, if I need to learn it, I can probably do it. Like there's a, there's a point where like I can, you, I can move anywhere really across the line. If we're in a tough formation spot where we need to like flip a formation last second, or we need to get a call off. And I think be, just being able to be like the best athlete that I can, not being the strongest or not being the fastest, just being the best combination of all of that and yeah. being explosive and being able to, being able to move well, having like open hips. That's one thing I really tried to focus on this off season is like stretching out my lower body to really get me to get me to be able to like bend and move more. Um, so I think a lot of that secondary stuff that people, most people don't really pay attention to. I really think that it helped out. Nice. Great. Man. That's good to hear. And yeah, you know, you can see it, uh, you know, in your game, I think I was looking at like, I was going through stats and I think you've already passed the amount of tackles you had last year. Or something yeah. like that somewhere around there uh yeah. and, you know you picking up sacks but so kind of you know touching on you know your versatility there a little bit what, what are you hearing back from coaches in terms of you know where they want to line you up at at the next level are they looking at you at linebacker do they want to keep you up on the defensive line or what, what are you hearing back from them? yeah i've heard i've heard multiple things i've heard um some going with like the end or like an edge rusher i've had um multiple people reach out to he has like an inside linebacker and then a few, not as many, but a few reach out as an outside linebacker. Okay. So it's kind of mixed, mixed up. Nice. Uh, so if I was, if I was a coach and I was, I was saying, Noah, why, why do I need you on my team? What, what is it about you that I absolutely need to have on my team? What would you, what would you say to that? I think it would be the level of commitment that I can show to any one little thing that you could have me do. Um, if there's like, is, if it's any like specific tasks that you need, I feel like I would get it down right away. Just, just because I know in my head that if I have a job to do specifically given to me by a coach, I gotta be able to perform it like at the best of my ability in order to show that I can handle stuff like this and I can take on bigger roles and bigger tasks. Like that. Like that. One thing viewers should know is, you know, you guys at Elkhorn South, have you know at least from when I started following you guys have had some monsters at defensive line um you know you're, you're you both you know Maverick you're three star uh no you know you're on come up you're a monster out there but you guys have two two young bucks behind you that's Ashton and Henry uh talk to me about what it's like playing those guys and or playing with those guys and you know what, how are they like kind of in your ear? Like, oh, how can I improve and whatnot? Um, you guys have any comments on that? I mean, they're, bo they're both great players. Yeah. Uh, they're always trying to improve their game, always watching film. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I've, whenever I go get someone scout, they're, they're hard to go against. And, yeah. and they're having a great year so far. Mm -hmm. So, they're, I don't know, both great players. Yeah, I know that. it's They're always – 
at a point where if they have a question, they always they can come and ask me or Mav. I'm like, what you got to do in this point if you see a read like this, where you got to go, or what moves should I throw here? And it's always it's always fun, like Mav said, going against them on scout because then you're like, it's kind of like a like a teacher to, teacher student kind of moment. Like they're they're really good players. I have nothing bad to say about them at all, and they've really kept improving. Um, it's amazing to me how much better they've gotten from their sophomore year to now and like how much I've seen them uh, like be committed in like the offseason part portion of like recruitment and how, how much better like physically they've gotten to. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> so when I asked that, I saw, you know, you guys kind of smirked a little bit, a little bit. Any, yeah. any, any good stories on the D line or just stories about <laughs> the boys that come to mind? I mean, we're just, we're just good friends. I mean, we're always, yeah. we're always, <laughs> always. Um, yeah. I mean, the the line the line here is a, it's a tight group. It's it's something that we all we take pride in. Um, we're going we're going to Applebee's right after this. <laughs> nice, nice. So yep. We got limited wings for thirteen bucks. So like you got. To oh, dude! I hit that up last Friday. I'm on my way back in town. Yeah. Oh my gosh, dude! It's perfect. Um, yeah, I mean. Ash and, Ash and Henry are great players, but they have great personalities too. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I went out to yeah. Henry. No, you're fine. You're fine. No, um, cut out there. Look. Henry, Henry's a loud guy. He's always <laughs> something. Yeah. And then Ash is always the one to look at him and then look at me and just like shrug his arms and be like, what? <laughs> it's like, just like everyday, everyday life with them. Like, not even being like they're being like, they're um plan not even playing with them just like going to school with them and just seeing how they how they like go about day-to-day -day life is just it's just a joy yeah just like it's just the boys huh yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice so then you know is that is the whole applebee's thing is that just like a you guys thing or is it <laughs> like something you know like a pregame tradition pregame like ritual like and then do you guys have uh you know game day any like like what are you guys what is that vibe like too you know like what are you guys listening to in the locker room what are you guys saying to get hyped who's who's the guy that go up to the middle of the group and you know make that you know speech pregame speech or whatever it is uh, I mean we've always had our uh our lineman dinners Thursday nights or uh, the night before the game uh yeah. like a spot or a house to eat at so yeah. that's been going on ever since uh we were invited to them it's just rotational guys <laughs> yeah so. yeah but I mean, it's just great. We uh, we get to go to uh, what did we go last week? Who hot? Who back hot? up? Who hot? Yeah, man, that was. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I just love going to those. It's fun. Yeah, I'd say pregame wise, like we all have our we all have our little like things that we do pregame. I'd say there's not a whole lot of like pregame rituals. That I'd say we do. We each have our own little specific thing. I'm I normally I get the music in fast, and I'd like mm -hmm. turn like some noise canceling on, or just trying like shut out all the other noise i'm just like pacing back and forth in the locker room um mav you go out there pretty early i'd say yeah i mean i just i just like a i don't know i just like a quiet place i just mm -hmm. get my mind right stretch uh i mean i'm not really talking too much during pregame i'm yeah. just kind of trying to get locked in but i mean it's it gets real intense in the locker rooms and then you know, Coach Rose always gives his his speeches. He he really for such a mild mannered guy, he gets pretty intense. It's crazy to see how how inspirational he can get. It just like like just like that. It's, it's like a whole new person comes out. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we all the captains all kind of take a take a role in like the pregame, the pregame like like hype train. You know, there's always there always things that I'm doing that Mav's doing that Cole's doing and that Carter's doing. So. We we really try our best to get um the team as like energized as possible. Yeah. One of our when we were chosen as captains, one of our four pillars was enthusiasm. And so we really try and like take that to the next level and get as like get everyone as loud as possible, get everyone locked in. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so then, you know, you guys like you guys are just like very like I've been to your guys' practice. I've you know watched you guys play. You guys are just very high motor, high energy, you know, very, you know, I don't know, just electric dudes, I guess. You guys just got, you know, just energy. Do you guys have anything that you do to, like, decompress or maybe, like, after you've had a bad practice or maybe a bad game, um, you know, kind of get your mind right, get your get yourself back in that headspace, like, all right, now, you know, I'm good. Now I can go back and, you know, dominate. 
Man, I feel like every single time I don't feel like I have the greatest game. I just watch the film. Uh, I see I see what I can improve on, how I didn't do bad or how I did do good. And uh, and just that's what I mean, that's what practices are for is just improving on those things that you see in film from the previous weeks and, and just working on them really. Yeah, I'd say I'd say for games and for practices, if you if you don't feel like you perform the best, you always got to think about just take out all of that frustration, all that anger and put it into the next practice to make the next practice and further after that, the next game even better. So you don't have all this, just like this, this pent up like frustration against yourself. Like, don't just let it like, like fizzle out, like use it and like put it to good work. Yeah. And that's practices. They're starting to offer ice baths now. And those things are pretty nice to just, you know, let yourself kind of just calm yeah. down. Yeah, definitely. I've seen, you know, you see a lot of health benefits, you know, physical and mental from those ice baths, you know, and, yeah. and stuff. So then do you guys seek anything outside of, you know, football uh, in terms of, you know, like I said, helping you guys, you know, come like decompress, like maybe, you, you know, Maverick, you said your family was big to you. Maybe you hang out with family. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you guys go fishing or something like that. I mean, after games, I'll usually just go chill out, eat. Uh, eat. <laughs> eat. Eat. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Then uh, you know, I I usually just I don't know, I just especially if I'm a bad game, I'll just go to sleep, sleep on it, and just think about it tomorrow. I try not to think too much, try not to get in my head. So I just I don't know, I just watch film. Yeah, I'd say I'd say watching film, like seeing your mistakes somehow brings or somehow seeing your mistakes somehow puts me in a better mood about it because I can it's less of like a, a non anomaly in my head and more of like a a thing that I can see how it happened and why yeah. I did it. So I can kind of like fix that for the next time. Yep. So that film on how I made a mistake kind of like, and being able to fix it just makes me feel better. Cause now I know if it happens again, I know how to fix it and how to not do it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good thing. You know, having, having that tape, having that physical, you know, thing you could watch where I could be like, okay, I got, you know, I got blown up on this play because I was in the wrong position compared to, you know, just me not being, very good or whatever it may be. You guys, are, you guys are seniors. You guys are, you know, this is the last run for you guys in terms of your prep career. Um, you know, come December, what do you guys want to say about, uh, you know, your guys' your guys's year as, you know, your team? Well, I'd say obviously the goal for everyone is to make it all the way and see how far we go. And I think we have a real chance at that. I think there's a lot of great teams in the state right now, um, but I think we're up there with the best of them. And I really think we can compete. And I think come December, we want to be the ones who are playing when we so when we have to turn the lights on for practice because it's that late in the year. Yeah. Uh, I was just saying the same, same thing. <laughs> what he said. I mean. Championship dreams, huh? Yep. Yep. Nice. All right. So then, uh, you know, kind of just outside of football, um, you know, one thing about uh, this, you know, podcast show that I'm trying to do is, you know, just being able to give people, you know, a personal look at you, at you guys, um, outside of football. So, um, one question I ask everybody is what, I guess this is still kind of related to football. I don't know what I'm talking about, but, um, you know, what moment, what, you know, was there a moment, was there a time, a game play something that when it happened, that's when you realized yeah, this is this is like made you fall in love with the game. Like, what what was it that made you fall in love with football and made you realize like this is what I this is my passion. This is what I want to do. I'd probably say, oh my god, I got one. sophomore year uh, playoffs. I mean, that was super fun going against great teams like uh, was it Carney and uh, Lincoln Southeast. Yeah. So I mean, I had a great game in both of them and just. Oh, uh, seeing how seeing how riled up the crowd gets is just it's unbeatable feeling. I mean, I, I mean, you just I don't know. You just nah, think about that yeah. off season the whole time. So, yeah, yeah, I'd say kind of two separate moments for me, but like one of them, one of them is more similar to that, and one of them is like early on in my life. I was always like early, early on. I wasn't super big into football. And it was kind of, it was kind of just kind of just like doing whatever. Yeah. And I remember one, one day, I still remember this one day I was, I was living in Dallas at the time and we were at some, some 
I think some pool, I think some public pool. Mm-hmm. And we had, all, we had all get out of the water because it was like a senior slam or lightning strike or something like that. And there was these older kids playing with the football. And I'm like, oh, I'll go play with them. I'll go see what's up. And one of them like threw it like really high in the air. And I'm like, all right, I see that I got to catch this thing. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just thought that. And I didn't think I could because I was – I don't even know how old I was. I was probably like six. Yeah. And um, I end up catching it, and then they all see that, and they're like, oh, yo, that little kid just caught it. And I was like, somehow that, like, really got me to football to start. I'm him. Yeah. Somehow, <laughs> like a moment like that. And then I'd say also my sophomore year in the state game, the first time that we scored, I was in. And, like, seeing that moment and seeing, like, how – many people were like rooting for us at that point and then yeah. especially going off to the sideline i remember i was backup left tackle i was teddy Prohaska's backup mm. and i honestly didn't even think i was gonna get in i thought they were gonna play him the whole time yeah um and when i did get in that was when we scored and i remember coming off onto the sideline and seeing him and i've never seen him like be more excited than like that moment when i came up to him and i think at that point like that really like made me especially with high school football that really made me fall in love with high school football nice that's awesome to hear man that's those are some really cool moments for sure that you know state championship i you know that's something that i feel like you're gonna stick with you forever um so then uh one of my last questions here um it's really just to give you guys an opportunity um you know like as i've said before uh, in previous episodes uh, I feel like we as people don't necessarily always get take the opportunity to thank uh, the people that have helped us along our journeys. So, you know, if you guys want to thank, if you guys have anybody, you know, your parents, coaches, uh, you would like to thank, uh, you know, without them, you know, because I know it, it, it's sometimes just weird, like, you know, hey, mom, you know, I appreciate what you do. Uh, so if you guys want to take that opportunity to do that, you know, you can go ahead. Yeah, uh, mom and dad, I appreciate send me all those camps i know that was a pain <laughs> uh, just you know supporting me through the whole process i'd say all the coaches that i've had uh present and past they've they've really like helped me fall in love with this game like high school and then like club middle school middle school for the middle school and then like even before that and like flag football i'd say there's never been a time playing football where i haven't like really really enjoyed it and i want to like i, I really want to thank the coaches for that yeah. And then I just feel I want to thank um, just like the people here at, at school. Thank thank you, Maverick. You know, just making <laughs> the whole environment like a great environment to be in. Yeah. Uh, I'd probably say my family. I mean, my twin brother, uh, he always comes to my games. And then my my mom gave me athletic jeans. Uh, <laughs> and then my dad, too. I mean, we went all over the camps and visits and stuff. So that's a big time commitment for him. Yeah, you know, like I said, you know, we we as people, you know, even myself, I don't always take the opportunity to do that, you know, and especially to our loved ones, we just kind of always, you know, assume that we know they're thankful for, uh, we're thankful for them. So just, you know, like to give the opportunity. So then, you know, closing it out here. So, you know, Maverick, you've already made, you know, your big decision, uh, you know, for school. Noah, uh, you have you know, you'll have your time to make that decision. But tonight, uh, I actually have, you guys will have to make a huge decision. Um, I, I'm sorry, I didn't prepare you guys. But I have Matthew Stafford against oh, Arizona or Joe Burrow against, I believe, the Jets. And I'm 0-2, guys. I'm down bad. Help me, man. Who, who, who am I, who am I, who's my dog here, bro? Matt Stafford or Joe Burr? Listen, listen to this. So... Maverick doesn't know anything. Yeah, I'm not a big NFL guy. Yeah, I pick one, and he auto drafted his team, and he spanked me by like seventy. I hate that. I hate that. I would say oh, that's <laughs> who does who does Burrow play? They play the Jets. So I mean, they're not great, but I don't know what they are yet. You know, so it's like it's tough. It's really tough. I I but you know Arizona. I think they're like. Their, their secondary, I think, is 12th right now because I have Matt Stafford on my bench and Tom Brady starting, so I have a decision like that to make, too. <laughs> I just can't do it, man, myself. Receivers got all their – or Bengals got all their receivers specs. Oh, man, that's – I I can't – why am I looking at you? You don't know. I don't know. I, I have Joe Burrow starting, so I, should I just leave I it at that and just, just pray his offensive line? Yeah. 
Stick Did with Joe Shad. Does something this week? Yeah, because the Jet, the Jets, the Jets D line isn't outstanding. All right, I I, I can live with that. I can deal with that. Man. All right, I appreciate it. All right, yeah. so, man. <laughs> so you guys got homecoming tomorrow. Uh, you guys play Northwest. Um, you know, uh, you know, I guess you know, just hopefully everyone pulls up, make it loud, make it. You know, are you guys on the homecoming court? You guys, either of you guys up for King? Yeah, we both are. We both are. Both are? Okay. Do you guys have to, like, campaign and stuff or no? I don't really care. No, I, yeah, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be able to campaign for it. Yeah, all right. Sweet, man. Well, you know, hopefully, you know, one, one of the boys takes it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, I appreciate you guys coming on. You know, I appreciate your time. Uh, hopefully, yeah. how, how many how many bowls of, or plates of these wings are you guys? I don't know. We uh, – I think I can stick with like four. Four. I don't know, oh, man. I might. I might have to go get. Some, I don't know what they got on there. Maybe steak. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. see we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what the night brings. All right. All right. Man. Well, I, I appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you guys. And like I said, I'll I'll send this out to you guys um Sunday, and then you guys can we'll go from there. I guess. Yep. Yeah. All right. Where there's fire, you see the smoke. Yeah. I know liars. I seen them fall. Yeah. I'm so tired from all these souls, it's done been a good year My tires don't leave the road, yeah uh. <laughs> Are they serious? I see liars that testified under oath, I hear Rappers not living out what